we start with system international units. SI units are the basis of all of the quantities that we study. Uh, we have the meter that represents length, the kilogram mass, and the second time, and the rest on the list here. What's interesting is that in May of 2019, a process was completed whereby the base units are now totally defined in terms of fundamental constants. And you can look at the NIST website to read about that. From our point of view, the meter kilogram second or MKS group of units uh, that includes the base units and other units we'll, we'll uh, look at, such as Newton for force and Joule for energy. Uh, the MKS family, uh, is the, that's the term I like to use, a family of units, such that if you're doing a calculation and a unit is not in the family, then you would have to convert. So if you had a centimeter, you would have to convert centi as 10 to the minus two. And here's a list of metric prefixes. Now what's funny too is in, with the kilogram, kilo does not have to be converted. Kilogram is in the family. Uh, if, you had, um, if you had a microjoule, right? Micro, 10 to the minus six, you'd have to convert. Now in labs, sometimes we use, I like to call it the CGS family, the centimeter, gram, and second family. It's, we mostly use MKS, but sometimes you'll use centimeter, gram, and second, and their uh, force is dynes and energy ergs. Now, the idea of base units is that they form the foundation. So here I'm showing length and time, and on top of that are derived quantities. So what makes a quantity basic is that there's not really a formula defining it. it. It's the foundation of everything else. But a derived quantity uh, has a formula. So for these quantities of kinematics, uh, position, distance, displacement, velocity, they all have formulas, right? And even if they sound similar, it's very important to know exactly what the quantity means. So distance is a length of a path traveled, right? The position is a coordinate on a number line. It's basically a length from the origin with a plus or minus. Displacement, change in position, uh, and the rest. Velocity is the first time derivative or the time rate of change of the position. Acceleration is the time rate of change of the velocity. And you can see the rest of the formulas. And there's plenty of problems you do in physics one where you get used to uh, you know, finding these quantities and what they mean. And here's a few more for angular quantities, right? We have angle is the ratio of two lengths, an arc length divided by a radius. Uh, angular velocity is the time rate of change of angle. And if something's moving around a circle, its angle's changing. Uh, the time rate of change of that angle is the angular velocity in radians per second. And you can have an angular acceleration. It's a measure of how the angular velocity changes. Now, after getting used to all the kinematic quantities, we also have that there are certain types of motion that you study uh, that have a lot of formulas that go with them, right? Motion with a constant acceleration, circular motion, periodic motion, and I laid these out in terms of how they're related. For example, the simple pendulum is periodic. It's also circular. Um, motion with a constant velocity is a subset of motion with a constant acceleration. It's also an example of motion with a constant speed. Now, to, to better lay all those out in a figure, I'm going to give each one a symbol just to, so I can lay that out a little better. So uh, A represents constant acceleration and you can see the rest of the symbols I used here. 
And what I've done is I've organized these as a Venn diagram because uh, some types of motion are subsets of others. Now at the top we have motion with a constant acceleration and here are some of the formulas that you get used to using that represent the position and velocity as functions of time. And you'll see the constant acceleration A in there and initial position and initial velocity also included with the subscript zero. The third equation can be found from the first two by algebraically eliminating time. And if you had a two-dimensional problem with x and y, it gets twice as difficult, right? You'd have three equations for x components and three for y. Now, motion with a constant speed is probably the simplest. The distance traveled is the speed times the time. If motion is periodic, it re there's a pattern that repeats itself. There's a period or frequency or angular frequency, and they're all related here. So that if you start with the period, the frequent in seconds, the frequency is one over the period. So cycles per second or Hertz. Angular frequency converts cycle to two pi radians. So two pi over tau, even if, even if it's not circular, you can take any cycle and map it to a circle. Uh, and so you can relate an angle to a part of the cycle. Uh, if you knew the frequency, then you can see the second row shows how to find period and angular frequency. And the third row shows if you started with angular frequency, how to find period and frequency. If motion is circular, it, you're constrained to a circle. I, first equation there takes the definition of angle and solves for the length or arc length around the circle, right? So length is radius times angle. Take a time rate of change and you get the uh, speed is the radius times the angular speed. Now for acceleration, we have a tangential component, a component of acceleration along your path. And that's the radius times the angular acceleration. But there's also by way of the fact that your velocity vector is changing direction there is a centripetal acceleration, which is speed squared divided by radius or radius times angular speed squared. Now I put the rest of the motions in the Venn diagram to complete the figure. We have constant velocity motion, which is a special case of motion with a constant acceleration. We just have the acceleration is zero. Another example of motion with a constant acceleration is freefall or projectile motion. With the y-axis directed up and x horizontal, the acceleration has a y component of minus g and no x component. And we get these equations. Uh, we can have a uniform circular motion, which is motion around the circle at a constant speed. And that would be a subset of motion with a constant angular acceleration. Now, if you look at these equations here, they look very similar to the one dimensional case of motion with a constant acceleration. It's just that instead of position, velocity, and acceleration, we have angle, angular velocity, angular acceleration. Now, a special kind of periodic motion is simple harmonic motion where the acceleration is proportional to the distance where the proportionality constant is negative. So I explicitly show that as negative omega squared and omega turns out to be the angular frequency. We get then the position and velocity are sinusoidal, right? They could be sines, cosines. In this case, I'm showing position as a sine and the derivative of that would give us cosine. And that also shows us that the maximum speed, V max, is the angular frequency times the amplitude, X max. Uh, the most common case of simple harmonic motion is the mass and spring. In that case, the angular frequency is the square root of the Hooke's law spring constant divided by mass. Uh, we also have a, a simple pendulum, which is a type of periodic motion, also circular motion where you have a mass at the end of a length of string uh, swinging back and forth through an angle theta.
But in the small amplitude case, that is, if theta max is small, it's almost as if the mass is just going left and right. And actually, in that limit of small amplitude, it's also simple harmonic, with the angular frequency being the square root of g over the length of the string. And that's all of the motions. And the, the, these three ideas of understanding base units and uh, uh, the different families of units that you might use. Uh, the house of cards, I like to call the, the structure from base units up through all calculated values. Because after all, if you're not sure what a particular quantity means, like say energy, you'd have to realize where it is in the house of cards and backtrack, you know, so that it may be that something earlier isn't clear. So it's a, it's a structure to be aware of. And then our, I like my motion Venn diagram. I hope you like that as well. There you have it.